welcome once again to explainingcomputers.com. In my next two videos, I'm going to be building an i7 PC. And as a prelude to that, this time I thought I'd talk about the pros and cons of building your own computer. Now, to be specific, what I'm really talking about is building your own desktop PC, because building your own laptop or tablet, well, it's possible, we've seen that with some components in videos recently, but in practical terms, you'll never build a tablet or a laptop to the same level of quality and for the same price as a traditional manufacturer. However, when it comes to a desktop PC, you certainly can build something as good as a manufacturer can deliver, so let's consider why people might decide to do that. One of the most fundamental reasons to build your own PC is that, subject to your budget, you can have everything your way. You can have exactly what you want. You will decide on the processor you use, the uh, motherboard's chipset, the motherboard itself. You can decide on, on the RAM, the type of RAM, the speed of RAM you have. You can decide on your storage solutions, on your graphics card, whether you want a large case, a small case, whatever you want up to you. You can have it cool with normal fans, you can have water cooling, you can have passive cooling. All the options are there if you specify and build your own computer. And more than that, you can also build in expansion opportunities. You can think about the future of it. So, for example, if you buy a pre-built PC, they may well use a motherboard that only has two memory slots, both of which you occupy when you get the PC. So, if you want to upgrade the memory, you have to get rid of those and put more memory in. Whereas, if you build your own PC, you could think about expansion, put in a motherboard with four memory slots, only use two initially, and then you can put more memory in the future without throwing away the components you've actually already purchased. Or, for example, if you're building your own PC, you might decide to put a more powerful power supply in than you initially need. It wouldn't draw more power when you first built your PC, but it might allow you to fit a large graphics card in the future, uh, which you wouldn't have got initially in the computer. Or, for example, you might decide to initially build a PC and use the onboard graphics, and then in the future to add a graphics card. So, you can think of a PC as an ongoing project if you build it yourself, rather than a, a fixed box you get if you buy it from a manufacturer. It's also worth noting if you build your own PC, you may save money. You may not. And I'll come back to this issue of cost later in the video. As I've said, one of the great benefits of building your own PC is that you are in control. But that's also one of the great drawbacks. You're in control, nobody else. If you actually choose the wrong components or components that don't work together, and that's perfectly possible, or if you break things when you put it together or you put it together wrongly, or even if you make no mistakes at all but you put it together and it still doesn't work because there's a faulty component somewhere, the only person you can turn to is yourself. You've got no support, you've got no warranty, no retailer to go back to, a manufacturer to go back to. Yes, you've probably got a warranty on the parts you've fitted, but to be honest, getting um, return on that warranty is quite tricky when the part is sitting in the middle of a computer. So you've got to be really certain that you are technically competent to actually put the thing together and not to make any mistakes. I've been building PCs for over 20 years now. I've built all sorts of PCs for myself and for other people. I've only ever once had a problem uh, putting a PC together that didn't work straight away, which was a PC I built with a friend of mine well over 10 years ago now, and he suddenly made a decision to, to build a PC one Saturday afternoon. So we got the parts uh, from various computer stores and the memory always worried me. The memory came out of a drawer in the computer store. It wasn't in an anti-static bag, it wasn't in a box. He was happy, I was a bit nervous. We put the uh, computer together, it didn't work. And it took us about a day to figure out it was the memory and it clearly was memory, it wasn't working properly. And eventually he got some more memory and it all worked. And I think that story should just remind you, if you are going to self-build, be very careful to get components you, you know the credibility of. Some components it's fairly safe to use second-hand, things like, say, an optical drive. But um, be careful you're not going to buy components, put them together, cause yourself a lot of trouble, because only you will have to sort that problem out. Beyond that having any support, the other thing to think about is if you specify and build your own PC, it'll probably have very low resale value if you ever want to sell it on in the future, because you won't end up with a branded box from a known manufacturer. So whilst you might be really happy with your PC, 
other people will probably not be happy to buy it from you, or at least not for a great deal of money. So do think about the future if you're thinking about building your own PC. So, is it really cheaper to build your own PC? Well, in theory, you'd think it would be, wouldn't it? Because you're not paying for the labour of having the thing put together, you're not paying for a profit margin for the manufacturer. However, a large manufacturer can get bulk purchase discounts on components, so they may well pay less for their processors and graphics cards and, and discs than you will, which means that could eat up into the saving you make by not paying for their profit margin and their labour. The other thing to think about is if you're building your own PC, probably you're going to want to buy Windows, obviously, if it's going to be a Windows PC. And Windows isn't cheap. And particularly if you're building a low-cost PC, a low-spec PC, the cost of Windows could tip the balance between whether it's cheaper to build your own PC or to buy a pre-manufactured PC. Uh, if you're building a more expensive PC, the higher spec you go, the less of a proportion of the price Windows is, and clearly the less of an issue that happens to be. And of course, if you're going to build a PC and put Linux on it, then almost certainly you are going to save money because you're not going to be paying anything at all for Windows, either from the manufacturer or yourself, your operating system is three. But just do think about that cost of Windows when you're specking out a PC. So many times I've specced out a PC, built for someone at the low end of the market and gone, yeah, this is much cheaper than, than actually uh, going and buying a pre-built machine. And then we say, what does Windows cost? Ah, and, and it makes a difference. So do think about that. So far, I've discussed the practical pros and cons of building your own computer in terms of the actual machine itself, what you get, what you pay for at the spec, etc. However, there is another factor to bear in mind when you're considering self-building, and that is the fact that it involves not just the PC, but the user. It involves you. you know, if you build your own PC, you will emotionally invest in it. If you're someone with a passion for DIY, then you will build your own PC and it'll be yours. You'll understand that PC. You'll know exactly what's inside it, how it got there, how it works. Your use of a computer changes after you've built it, as opposed to having this anonymous box that arrives on your desk and you're not quite sure what's inside. You know what the spec is, but it's not the same as actually having put the thing together. So you get a great educational experience building a PC. You always learn with, with every build something that's going on and you end up with a machine which is absolutely yours. A machine that you'll never hesitate about taking a screwdriver to and opening it up and, and adding an extra bit or, or mending it. So do think about that bit. And I think for many people, once they've built their own PC, once they keep doing it, precisely for that reason, it becomes their hardware. It's also the case if you do self-build, you can have partially linked to that a sort of ongoing build. You know, rarely if you replace your PC, do you have to replace absolutely everything? Because you'll probably be able to reuse a case or maybe a power supply or an optical drive or something. So you tend to have a, an evolutionary PC once you start self-building rather than discrete PCs you buy in boxes from a manufacturer. So don't discount the passion of it. Don't discount the fact you've got a chance for a human involvement in computing through self-building. So, to summarise what I've said, if you build your own PC, you will be in complete control. You'll be able to have the exact specification you want subject to your budget. You'll also be able to plan any required upgrade path. You may save money. You'll certainly have a great learning experience and you'll be able to invest emotionally in your new hardware. Computer will never feel the same again after you've done your first self-build. On the negative side though, you'll have no warranty, no support, a low resale value of the PC in the future, and you may actually pay more. It's also worth, of course, remembering, and I should have said right from the start, if you've got no technical expertise, you probably shouldn't attempt to build your own computer. You don't want to end up with a very large pile of expensive components that does nothing because you couldn't get them to put them together or you've broken them. That wouldn't be a good computing experience. Talking of computing experiences, I'd be interested to know your views on self-building, whether they've changed over time. Are you a self-builder? Would you never think of it? Are you someone who's maybe thinking about self-building in the future? But now that's it for this video. Next time we've got the i7 build. If you haven't uh, subscribed, please subscribe. And I'll see you again next time for the i7 build very soon.